Well, we are talking Zags this morning on Upper Left Sports and coming off that win uh, over West Virginia, and that was an emotional roller coaster. Uh, I wasn't as, ready for that, man. As a Zags fan, we knew the Zags were in for a, a tough game. I mean, mm-hmm. this is a, a well coached West Virginia team with Bob Huggins that we knew that we were going to be in for a battle. They play great defense, uh, they always play together well as a unit. Yep. Uh, I was not emotionally uh, prepared for what happened in that game with Jalen Suggs. And for those of you who, uh, I'm sure most of you caught the game, but Jalen Suggs goes down in the first half, and it looked really bad. Yeah, Uh, You're thinking, worst case scenario, right away, he's grabbing for that Achilles. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some of the worst camera work I've ever seen on a a national broadcast. That ESPN angle, man, like, Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's just not there. That angle is terrible. When he first goes down, you're not seeing the whole thing, and you're like, oh, Jalen's down tying his shoe. And they finally get the, the camera angle out, and he's grabbing for his Achilles, and it, it seemed like it took an eternity to get someone out on the floor to help him. Yeah. And he's in a lot of pain. So our, our minds go, worst-case scenario, he can't put any weight on it. He's in a ton of pain, and he's not just in a lot of physical pain. It looked like Jalen thought his season was over. Yeah, the look on his face was was much more than somebody who rolled an ankle, right? We've seen plenty of high ankle sprains, things like that. Um, and typically it's more of a like a frustrated look, right? You know you're hurt. You know you're going to be out this game and next game. It's, it's a frustration look on your face. The look on Jalen's face obviously was, was telling us a lot more where he was grabbing on his leg, the fact that he couldn't put any weight on it. Uh, And even just, you looked at the rest of the Gonzaga team as well, right? I mean, that's something that you can always kind of tell is, how does a team handle an injury, right? If if your running mate goes down with an ankle, it's like, okay, we're we're good, we can do this. They look like they were gut punched. And that right there just showed you that, you know, I think everybody on the floor thought it was worse than it was yeah mark few you know all of his teammates were hovering over him. mark few sent them back to the bench didn't want them being around it and zeg's twitter we were texting back and forth you know we're like and the team looked like they had the win taken out of them they looked like yeah. they were really struggling with that news and we said gosh you know you, you dropped this game then you got to turn around and play baylor on saturday 2-0 and turns into 2-2 and very quickly mm-hmm. and you lift your head up to watch what's going on in the actual game, and there's this guy named Andrew Nembard who wasn't even supposed to be a part of this team yeah. going off. And I think we're like, well, wait, wait a second. You know, we need Jalen back, but this dude's pretty good. Hundred percent. I mean, that you know, when Jalen went down, the Zags were looking. I think it was like a seven point deficit. And it just felt like it was slipping away. And we were texting back and forth, like you said. Uh, I mean, I was tweeting about it, you know, and it was like one of Andrew Nemhard or Yai needs to step up right here. One of them needs to step up and take this game over. And, you know, ultimately, Yai put up just kind of that, just that game you expected of him do everything. But I don't think anybody expected Nemhard to just step in, take the reins, and really be that calming force behind that comeback. Yeah, he finished the game with 19 points, five rebounds, uh, six assists on seven of 14 shooting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Of those seven field goals made, uh, they were all inside the arc. He was seven of 11 from inside the arc, and he did such a good job getting to the basket, shielding off guys with his body. And It was one of those situations where we know he's super talented. Yeah, The will that he had in that game, watching that game as a fan, it kind of looked like Andrew said, I'm going to put you guys on my back. And I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of this game, and we'll worry about Baylor in a few days. Yeah, and they needed that man. They absolutely needed somebody to step up and be that person. You know, Nemar, this is a guy who didn't really get a practice with the starters until about a week before the season. You know, as you said, it was somebody they did not expect to play this year. He was going to be a redshirt. That was the plan all along, until all the rumblings kind of came out about the NCAA approving waivers this year. So, really, realistically, we're looking at a guy who as talented as he is, didn't have the chemistry with this starting five. And I think him coming in, not only huge for his confidence moving forward doing this, but I think it's huge confidence for his teammates and him, knowing that he can be that guy, knowing they have another veteran presence out on the floor, and what this means for this team going forward. Of course, if we have Suggs, you know, healthy, 
remains healthy throughout the season. Nemhard continues to play like this. This team just got that much better, and they've already been the best offense in the country. Yeah, well, you watch this team take down number six Kansas first game of the year, mm -hmm. and as a Zags fan watching what Mark Few does with this team every year, you see that there's room for growth. And yeah. I think we saw part of that in that game with Andrew Nembard. And I'll tell you what, when you talk about a veteran presence, he may be a new name to Gonzaga fans, but this is a guy, he was in the 2018 class. He was actually number 18 on the ESPN Top 100. GU wanted him. He ended up choosing Florida, mm -hmm. had offers from Tony Bennett at Virginia, USC, Ohio State. And this is a guy who played international competition for Team Canada. He was on their U16 U17, U18, and also played on their senior team in the 2019 World Cup. So he has a lot of experience under his belt. And just to your point, if he can play the way that he did against West Virginia mm -hmm. the rest of this season with that confidence and be that type of option with Jalen Suggs on the floor, this is why a lot of college basketball experts are saying, hey, this is a team to beat. Doesn't yeah. mean they'll win it, but this is the most talented team in the country. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we, we've already seen the talks of Gonzaga or the field. Anytime that conversation comes up, it just tells you the potential of these powerhouse teams, right? It's been other teams, of course, in that conversation previously. But for Gonzaga, you lose your five-star point guard in the first half. And, and what do you do? You know, most teams that happens and you're in a world of hurt. Gonzaga pulls a former five-star recruit off the bench and just plug and play, man. It really looked like he was able to just come in and immediately take off. And, you know, his experience obviously was key. This was a guy who wasn't afraid of the moment. You know, he started every game for two seasons at Florida. He was an SEC All-Freshman, uh, Freshman of the Year, I believe he was. And so, you know, I mean, everything he's gone through in his career just showed right there. It prepared him for that moment. And for him to come in, on, come in and take over like that, this team is just so versatile on the backcourt. We've talked about it, kind of the difference between this team and the 2016 National Championship team. That team was so talented in the front court, And this team, the backcourt, is just an embarrassment of riches for the Zags. Yeah, and, and really, this was a game that it looked like at several points, okay, here we go. The Zags are going to finally pull away. It's a tough, gritty West Virginia squad. I ended up being close all the way to the end, but his play down the stretch was so huge. I mean, he scored yeah. every point down the stretch other than those final Kispert free throws in the mm -hmm. last two minutes. Uh, he really put the icing on the cake. And, and I want to talk about kind of this death lineup that Zags fans are talking about now. Uh, and what that is is it's Andrew Nemard, Suggs, uh, Yai, Kispert, and Timmy. They're outscoring opponents by 0. .64 points per possession. Um, well, what does that mean? Well, the, the Zegs starting lineup, which is doing very well, is only outscoring opponents by 0. .22 points per possession. And, and that, that death lineup, we only saw them on the floor for 49 seconds together in that first half. But those final nine minutes, that was the grouping Mark Few really went with down the stretch. It was. I mean, they show there the, the squad that was kind of ready to take over there. And, I mean, it's crazy to think, you know, we're talking about a death lineup with Gonzaga, and that's not something that's really come up, even with all the talented squads they've had in years past. And I think it really just shows you that that lineup is so talented defensively on the perimeter. Jalen Suggs, of course, has been a just great surprise for a lot of people on the defensive end of the court. Um, I know you and I talked about it in our season preview. I was a little bit higher on his defensive potential than a lot of people were. But he's put that together. Got to remind people of that. Of course, you have uh, Jolie Yai as well. You know, he he's one that, again, we've known that he's a great perimeter defender. And Nemhard, in, in his own right, has been very good on that end. All three players are extremely long. And I think it's just, it's really made it difficult on opposing defenses. And they're going to score, right? Gonzaga can roll out a number of lineups that can score. But that defense does so well as far as their perimeter defense that it really allows them to kind of stretch out, get out on those runs, 
and put some room between them and the other team. I think when he's been on the floor, Jalen looks a lot more comfortable, and we see that. So we talk about that death lineup, and as a Zags fan, you look at it and you go, well, yeah, I mean, so there's no Anton Watson. And mm-hmm. let's let's not blame Anton Watson. You know, he struggled with the ball in his hands. Anton Watson is never going to be uh, this team's number one scoring option. Sure. Or two or three. That's not his role. He knows that. What he brings to this team is his length, his ability to play defense, his rebounding, very smart IQ player. Very. And so while we may roll out those stats of look at what this death lineup's doing, let's talk about another lineup that includes Watson. But I think this is where we're getting into the Andrew Nembard is really the secret sauce for this GU team is they have another lineup of Ayayi, Kispert, Nembard, Timmy, and Watson. That grouping's outscoring opponents by 0.85 points per possession on the season. And so you look at what is the same between these two, and it's this new addition in Andrew Nembard. And so don't don't blame Anton Watson for the no. team not being efficient. Nembard's really, he's not a flashy player. He reminds me uh, a little bit of Joel Ayayi, that He's that glue piece. If you can have two glue pieces on this team, that he's going to s- also get you twenty points. Yeah, and it's a <laughs> quiet twenty points. Yeah. you know, you go down to it again. He's scoring nineteen points, five rebounds, and six assists. These GU guards, the way that they rebound the ball is better than a lot of teams' front courts rebound the ball. It is. And when you've got a guy like Nemard, you have a guy like Joel Yai who can do that. None of these GU guys, and this is what Mark Few's been known for so many years, is they don't care about their stat line. They care about one thing, that's getting the W. And we talked about it early in the season. You're going to see at some point this year a 30-point Jalen Suggs game. We've almost seen it. We've almost seen a 30-point Drew Timmy game. You're going to see it from Corey Kispert. And and Joel Ayayi and Andrew Nemard are going to have their own games. These guys don't care about their stat lines. They just figure out ways to get it done. Yeah, you can really tell they enjoy playing together. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing in this team. You know, they talked about it in the West Virginia broadcast about, uh, you know, just the energy this team shows in shoot arounds and even during the game and how different it was, of course, when Suggs went down. And it, it just really goes to show, man, these guys play so well together. They're out there for each other. None of them are, you know, stat hunting, trying to get drafted, even though many players on this team have draft great draft prospects right but they're out there for the win and it just really shows that they are happy to see the guy next to them score 30 and they're happy scoring 10 they all know they're going to get their shot and that's what makes this team so deep we're talking five different players who can easily go off and get you 25 or 30 points and that's just something that gonzaga hasn't had you know, really in years past, that many guys who were capable. Yeah, I'll tell you what, as a college basketball fan, so you watch number one Gonzaga take down number 11 West Virginia, and then at the same uh, place in Indianapolis, which let's not forget, that's actually where the final four, if not the entire NCAA tournament, is scheduled to be played. Uh, You got number two Baylor versus number five Illinois. Baylor took care of business, and you're like, gosh, could you imagine – if we were able to watch number one Gonzaga take on number two Baylor, how, if only, man. how cool would that be? And, you know, with them playing as well as they are right now, imagine if it was within the next 72 hours. 